Welcome to Mercury Farms, episode one. I just want to start by saying some of this episode was filmed while I was away on holiday, some filmed after I got back. The problem is some of the stuff I said at the start of the video is no longer true because Jim's update for Mercury Farms went live while I was away on holiday. So I have, where possible, put little tags in to say what things have changed, but bear with me and enjoy this episode with me, Mr. Silly P. It's 9.23 in the morning, 9.24 now, and we're here on Mercury Farms, and you've guessed it, the winner of the poll by a long, long way was the New Holland T6 Blue Power. Um, yeah, most people said, first tractor I got on Ravenport, it was a workhorse, did everything I needed it to, so it was only right that it came with me, and they were absolutely right, it should have come with me too. There's a couple of bits of equipment that I haven't brought with me. I was going to bring the bag lift and stuff, but I think I'll get that when I'm here anyway. Um, so this episode is going to be a kind of... I'm not doing subscriber contracts on this Let's Play. What I normally do is run two Let's Plays at a time. One will be subscriber contracts narrative, that kind of thing. The other one will be playing me, playing for me. Just, you know, enjoying it and doing what I want to do. That's kind of the plan. Now, things would be a little bit different. I could have gone that way, actually. I think I will go that way. Um, I'm on new farmer mode. Um, but I've got 200,000. So I've brought 100,000 with me. So rather than starting with 100,000, I've got 200,000. But what I've done is kind of set it up almost like start from scratch in a way. Um, so I've kind of got rid of a load of stuff already. You'll see what I mean. Um, Jim's working on the update, or the update may have even been submitted by now, um, for this map. Because there are a few issues that people have mentioned and things that I will mention now anyway um, in this episode. One over at the um, livestock market where you can buy slurry and manure. The slurry isn't working at the moment, but Jim is working on that. But you can buy manure. Um, people are having trouble selling fuel. I think that's more to do with there's not a compatible tanker at the moment. Um, you can sell fuel, but obviously once we've got a compatible tanker, that will make all the difference. Now the other thing is this, when you start on new farmer mode, normally you've got all the buildings and stuff, which I haven't. I've sold a load of them already. I got rid of them, so I want it to be kind of more sort of semi start from scratch, semi new farmer mode. Um, if you start on farm manager or start from scratch, you don't obviously have any of the buildings. But here's the problem. For some reason, the map itself, the game itself, is still thinking the buildings are there. So when you clear this area, or you've come in and you haven't got them at all, and you go to put your placeables down, it's not allowing you to place your placeables where the game's original ones were, if that makes sense. Again, Jim is working on that, and hopefully that will be resolved. Um, he's not too sure why it's done that. And that's the problem I've mentioned before, is that a lot of these guys, when they're making their maps, they're making them on PC, they, they build them all on PC, they make all the changes they need to to make them compatible for PS4, but until it actually goes live on PS4, they don't know if everything has worked how it should have done. And sometimes you get those gremlins, don't you? Those ghosts in the machine, little things that go wrong, and... Um, then yeah, you have to have an update because obviously they then have to go away and just have a bit of a fiddle around and a tweak until they can get it just right. So here we are. We are starting not with a farmhouse, but we have a caravan. This is what we're starting in. It will do exactly the same job. Once we've got enough money and we've built up a little bit, maybe we'll buy a farmhouse and we'll have one built. And um, for the time being, we are living out of a caravan. Um, also, we've got a silo because we start off with some crops and stuff in it. So I've kept the silo here and we've got the feed building, uh, the seed and fertilizer buildings. Other than that, I've got no sheds, no storage, no barns here. Um, over at the main animal area, I've got no pig farm because I wasn't intending doing any pigs on this one. I have left the cow pen and I have left the sheep pen, but they're both empty. Um, that was the other thing, the bunker silo. The bunker silo over at the main animal area, interestingly enough, if we go in to placeables, I don't know if it's still going to be on here now, it might be, silos, 
Um, Jim's might be on here. He's, he messaged me and said, I don't understand why it's done it. Yeah, that bunker silo, right? 14,000. That's Jim's one that was over by the animal area. <laughs> 65 slots. And Jim said, it doesn't make any sense. Why, why would it be 65 slots? It's two concrete walls that hold some stuff. Yeah, I get it. There's a few little, you know, there's a, a few twiddly bits that go with that. But Jim said, you know what? Get rid of it. Get rid of it straight away. And then hopefully when the update comes, you'll be out of place in the same place or near it or next to it. Um, one of the in-game ones may be. I know his is a lot cheaper. Um, you can get the small bunker silo for 15 grand. So his was a bit bigger, but that's a catastrophic amount of slots. And he doesn't know why. It's very weird. Everything else seems to be fine. So as you can see, a lot of these things you can buy in place. I've kept all of the silos at the various different locations at hillside mercury hillside farm um, i've kept the silo there i've kept the one at the main animal farm but i've got rid of the barns i've got rid of the shelters um all those kind of things have all gone so let's say for all intents and purposes we kind of start from scratch but oh hang on we have got this did i buy that or lease it maybe i did buy it just got that oh no we have yeah we got the um the bag lifter and we've got the uh oh cool that's good i wasn't sure what i'd done <laughs> uh what i've also done is swapped out the aggro liner trailer for the flegal modded one um i quite like this i haven't really used it very much i think i've just bought one on marwell manor farm um so we've got that instead um but uh, the other things we've got a limited supply everything needs work we've got the small cedar the small cultivator we've got the fuel tank we've got the water tank um, and we've got the um, the Rossel Mash Nova 330, all requiring a lot of work. And that's it. Um, and our New Holland, that's all we've got. Now I'm starting off this Let's Play, and my logo, you might have noticed on the thumbnail, you might not have noticed, now says Farm and Forestry Solutions, because we're going to be doing a bit more forestry. So with our 200,000, straight off the bat, there's a couple of things I want to get. Uh, firstly, we're going to buy the forest up here, which is 76,000. I'm going to buy that. That's now our land. It joins onto what we had already as part of the kind of in-game start thing on new farmer mode. Obviously, if you're starting on start from scratch or farm manager, you won't have any plots of land. Um, we have also got purchased prior to buying uh, to playing on the map, the area around the sawmill. And I'll explain to you why in a moment. So we've got our forest over there, but we've also got an ongoing contract with the sawmill um, so I'm going to be doing a lot of forestry to get ourselves going I am probably going to buy um, a water tanker um, but then I'll lease a truck because I want to be able to do some of the um, kind of the game options that Jim's given us um, and because he's given us the option to be able to buy manure and we could, we could put the whole Gassane stock um, placeable for buying manure on here if we wanted to as well um, we can sell manure, we can put it into the greenhouses and various different locations. Um, we can also um, collect water and we can sell that at different locations. So I'll be doing a bit of that here and there. So it's kind of local contract work in a way. I'm going to be doing a bit of that to build up the farm. We are going to do some arable and we are going to get some animals. But I'm starting this off in a slightly different way. I think I've done it on a few different Let's Plays before where I've started off doing forestry. But generally speaking, that is all. I'll just buy a static wood chipper and just blitz away hammering stuff through a static wood chipper. I'm not doing that on this Let's Play. It's going to be slightly different. So we're going to pull out and we're going to head over. Um, so what I've kind of done is, is pre-set up. And I know this episode says setting up, and it kind of is in a way. Um, at the sawmill, and this is thanks to Bear and Papa, and mine is slightly different. Bear and Papa on Felsbrun has set up his own forestry section up by Field 3, up on the sort of mountainside, and it's phenomenal. Um, and what he did was went in, planted some trees, let them grow for two days, then planted the next lot, let them grow, plant the next lot. So he's got a whole mixture of trees all planted and in different growth stages, which is just amazing. And he's put tracks in and all that kind of stuff around it. I've kind of semi done that, not to the same degree. I didn't want to copy what he'd done for a start, but I wanted to do it slightly differently. 
So we were in the sawmill. We've got like a forest nursery in a way. Um, and it's kind of in sections rather than all mixed in together. So as you can see, over to the right hand side here, we've got a load of trees planted. And these are all just basically uh, one stage off the saplings. So they do this weird wiggly thing. It's like it's like grouped from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy having a bit of a dance there in the wind. So I've got one section here where they're part grown. Um, these are at a later stage of maturity. Now we've got a mixture of in-game or in-map uh, fir trees and then we've got pine trees of what have been planted. So we've got different sections with different growths. So kind of just over saplings there, some slightly larger ones to the side here. Um, as we come up to the sawmill, and this is why I had to buy the plot, I've kind of put in a couple of tracks, one to either side. Um, so the track that goes off this side, and unfortunately I couldn't go right up to here because it says I don't own this land, although I've bought all the way around it. The sawmill bit you can't buy, so I couldn't actually uh, change this bit here. What I've done, we've got kind of a track that runs up here. So we've got another section up here, which are beyond saplings, but they aren't quite on the larger side. So there's a whole section up here of those. Um, and then if we go right the way through and follow this track. Takes up through the trees. These will all grow as, as we progress through the game. We've got a whole section up here of, I think they're fully mature, fully grown. Which are going to need some work doing on them at some point. And then if we go over to the other side of the track. We've got another section which is um, kind of between... Well, yeah, it's between the fully grown and these. So follow the track the other side. These are the ones that are kind of given to you anyway around the sawmill uh, by Jim. So these can be, we can fell those and do some work on those as well. Follow the track up. So you see these ones here aren't fully mature, aren't fully grown, but they're not far off. And weirdly enough, I've got some that seem to be at different growth stages to others. How weird is that? How bizarre. But anyway, so we've got a whole other section here uh, of not quite fully mature trees, but not far off of it. Um, and when we go right the way through, we've got a little kind of forestry you know, area here, if, whatever you want to call it. So that's kind of what I've been doing to set up the map. Um, prepping for, for playing. Adding a slightly different dimension to it. Which I think, again, is the beauty of having... Um, the landscaping tool and all of that because you can come into a map and before you even start a let's play so the little the smaller sapling ones comes right the way out to here um, you can do a bit of fiddling around you can put in some extra tracks and you can cut out some hedges and you can you know do a bit of texture work and anything you want really to set your map up how you want to play it which is I think a fantastic a fantastic thing so what do I need to start with well I've only got 123,000 left. I'm going to need a chainsaw. I don't think... Have I got a chainsaw? I have got a chainsaw. Oh, cool. So I don't need a chainsaw. Um, I'm going to get a water tanker, like I say, so I can do a few jobs. And I will lease um, a truck to do that with. So I haven't got enough money to buy the truck yet. I could take out a loan if I wanted to. I guess I could do that. Um, oh, that was the other thing. A lot of pe people were asking about the sell points. Now on FS17, these were all the sell points for various different crops. You had the sell point for manure, you had the sell point for, there was one for slurry just there, wood chips and whatnot. Well, obviously the sawmill is now up on the hill, so wood chips and lumber get sold up there. Um, this section here is where you sold bales previously, um, hay, straw, bales, etc. But now we've got the new section up here for doing that, and where you can buy hay, straw, and grass so none of these actually work now they're from the original map that was the wall cell point obviously now we've got the spinnery for the wool and cotton further up the road so that doesn't either so for these bits around here um, they're just basically from the original map um, unfortunately like I say I think we lost there was the water cell point that was just here that's gone but yeah mustn't grumble um, and here we've got the pallet sell point and Jim said you can't sell all pallets here um, you can't sell what he said you can't sell now but these ones here are supposed to be an indication of what you can sell I think he said if I remember correctly which I do try to 
where possible, I try to remember correctly. Right, so I think after the store is probably where I need to go now. If you haven't already seen them, I did a couple of vlogs because I'm recording this while I'm away on holiday. Um, and I did a couple of vlogs. I was lucky enough to go to the class dealership at Rickaby, or at Carlisle. It's Rickaby at Carlisle, a class dealership. And they have their Rickaby show, the spring show, um, every year around this time. So I got to go a day before the show opened to have a look around all the machinery and stuff they were setting up and getting ready for the show. Um, I want to just say another massive shout out massive thank you to the staff at Rickaby um, just fantastic brilliant brilliant people um, I had a great time did a load of recording and I've done two vlogs on that um, I had to do it in two parts it's, I know um, people have been a bit kind of why did you bother doing two you could have just done one half hour episode kind of thing and I could have done the problem is with the PlayStation <laughs> Um, it allows on Share Factory 32 gigabytes of space for pictures, images, which is brilliant. For video, it only allows 2 gigabytes of space. So the problem was, once I converted my video files and moved them over, I could I had to, I had to do it in two separate bits. It wouldn't let me move all of my video files on. Now I could have done the editing on my my laptop, etc. But I'm so used to PS4 that was kind of the obvious route to go down. Now the forklift over here is leased when I did the first look map tour I said oh you know it's fantastic we get a forklift that is leased um, and it requires a bit of work but I, I might just keep it around I think we'll see so we're going to pop in speak to that actually you often see this on films I've, I've noticed that recently when you watch a film and they'll pull up and park somewhere and then walk miles to where they're going just park closer surely I know it adds a bit to the thing but you know what, let's go in and let's sort out what we're going to get. We've got the forest, that's brilliant. Good morning. So, let's scroll across um, and we'll go to... Now there's one that will do... I think it's the milk tanker, isn't it? So will that be under... might be under animals. can't remember what it is. Yeah, oh, 68 grand. Um, that will do 32,000 litres. So it's a bit like the Justin Q big liner we had. Um, then we had the modded ones that came later that held, held 60,000 litres, which were just phenomenal. But this will do water and it will do milk. Um, so I think that's going to be a no-brainer. We need one of those. Um, main colour, we can have... Chrome, stainless steel, or ooh, what does black look like? That looks rather fancy, doesn't it? The red around the back. What about stainless? Nah, it's got to be the chrome in it. <laughs> it just looks phenomenal. So, we're going to get that does not leave us with a lot of money so uh, we're going to go back out to here and we're going to go to trucks and we're going to lease the man TGS I think leave on trailer borgs main colour Perfect, and we will lease. Once we've got enough money together, we'll buy our own one. So what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to do a bit of a kind of a. There's going to be a bit of testing and a few bits and bobs going on here. Um, we'll move this to one side for a minute, and we we will get into the forestry. But I'm going to pull this up apart. Um, some people have said they've done water, and then they've gone back to do it later on, and it's not letting them. And 24 hours have gone by and it's still not letting them. I don't know if that's the case or not. I'm not too sure. So I thought, oh, that's a bit too close, isn't it? I have to climb in this side and climb across. So what we're going to do, we're going to reach down to the lake. We're going to get some water. And we're going to take it to the livestock market first. 
because the livestock market. I have now an ongoing contract with them to supply them with water at the garden centre for the greenhouses. Um, I think you can still sell... You still sell slurry? I can't remember now. I think you can sell slurry... Obviously there's nowhere to buy it yet, so the animals have got to produce it. But at the BGA, it won't take manure anymore, but I think it will... Where's the manure set point as well? We can buy manure. Oh no, the greenhouses will take manure as well, won't they? So I suppose, yeah, maybe a large-ish trailer. The one I've got might be alright. Again, I can take a few loads of manure and we'll do a couple of bits and bobs like that. That will get us a bit of money to start off with. Get the ball rolling. And these are the kind of contracts you can see the trees up there, the pine trees on the horizon. Um, so what I'm going to need is, I've got a chainsaw. I'm going to get... Um, it was one of the modded ones, I think, wasn't it? It was the the log trailer that went with the forwarder, I think. I really like the look of that. Um, mind you, releasing the truck, so I suppose I could get a bigger one, couldn't I? Can't remember how much they cost. Anyway, right, I'm going to see you down at the livestock market. No, I'm not. The lake is where we've got to go first. I suppose what I really need to do, but then it means I've got to own the property, is put a little track in from this side down to the main track rather than to keep driving this great big articulated lorry uh, down past the park <laughs> where all the kiddies are playing and you know water I think having done Ravenport on the easy economy and, and you can make a lot of money very very quickly it kind of seemed unfair. No, not unfair. It's not unfair. I mean, that's the whole point of having different economy levels. But when I played on FS17, I think I pretty much always played a normal economy. I don't think I ever put it on. Not not that it was a co economy, was it? Normal, easy, and the hard level. <laughs> um, I think I always played on normal on FS17. So that's what we're going to do here. Beacon's on. We are rather a heavy load. Now, obviously, contracts are available. Um, so the other thing I could do is um, get myself a fertilizer spreader, and I could do a few fertilizing contracts. Um, I did a mod review um, that trailed one, the orange one. I quite like the look of that. So we may get one of those, and that way I can pick up a few fertilizing contracts here and there. Again, it's just going to be kind of opening up a few more options, and that's uh, again the beauty of Jim's maps is that there are those options available. Oh, let's put the toe down. Oh, it's going to be close. Oh, that should be right. Okay. Yeah, it's not. That's really strange. When we when it was on FS17, you could make like thirty grand, I think, at a time. 
But that was a 60,000 litre tank, wasn't it? Of course, this is only 32,000 litres. Well, what I'm making at the moment is not to be sniffed at. That's not a bad price at all. What we made? 10, 12 grand? Twelve thousand one hundred fifty-three, not bad. Now I didn't show this on the first look, but up on the roof here, <laughs> it's really cool what Jim's done. Let's see if we can swing round. Up on the roof here, uh, we've got a little uh, couple of deck chairs, barbecue, cool box. <laughs> oh, that's absolutely brilliant. Jim's a legend. What a, what a great guy. Thoroughly nice bloke. Right then. So, we know we can make a bit of money doing a few things like that. Uh, what I suppose I need to start doing then is thinking about forestry. Um, so, I don't know whether or not to do a couple of runs. I think what we'll do is back past the lake. We'll grab some more water and we'll go to the garden centre. We'll unload at one of the greenhouses and make a little bit more. Then we'll sort out maybe picking up a log trailer. Whether I'll get one that goes in the back of the articulated lorry or get that one that's just trailed. So I can start off kind of smaller and then build up maybe. That's what we'll do. Let's just pull in here. That's the sealed milk. Still love that. Let's just stop here. Let's check on the old tablet. Um, so, log trailers, where are we? Forestry. Hope I've got it installed now, just suddenly realised. We've got the stepper ones. Um, there's going to be some more coming in the um, the Anderson DLC that's coming the end of the month. Um, there's a few different bale trailers and I think there's a, a log trailer in that as well, if I recall correctly. So right, the timber runner's 28 grand. We've got the Adjuranti ones, 15. 23 grand for the buyer belts. This is the one I like, the forwarder trailer. I just, I don't know, I just really like the look of it. I think it's a brilliant looking thing. 21,000. But I suppose there's no reason why. I can get more on the Timber Runner, absolutely, and there's not a lot of price difference. And the buyer belts, I don't know if it's got a, actually, See, it's not like on 17, is it? I keep forgetting. Has that got a tow bar? It hasn't, so that just comes as is. Uh, I don't think this one has either, is it? No tow bar on that one. So I thought you could get one of these and then pull the forward trailer behind it as well. Of course, there's always sort of the wood container as part of the IT runner pack. No, I'm going to go with the forward trailer, I think. We're going to start off with that. That, it looks really, really cool. I like it. I think I'm going to leave it open. Makes stuff a little bit easier. Then we'll set up logging configuration or street configuration. We'll do that, I think. That looks quite cool. And then we'll go back up to rim colour. So we'll buy that. 22,000. That'll be ready to collect. Now, we are going to need to earn some more money because I think what I normally do for my forestry, now I could on the front of the, I could start off just doing front loader. You know what, I think I'm going to do that and then we'll save up and we'll get a telehandler because otherwise it's going to get a little bit, you know, everything all at once kind of thing. Now I'm going to go with the longer front loader forks simply because it will give me a better reach. I'm probably going to need to get a... Uh, i wait for this as well, aren't I? Um, and then I usually use uh, yes, I don't know if it, the manure. It used to be a manure grab, wasn't it? So it's a manure fork now, but we've got a fork with grapple. But this one's got the side bits on, which is a bit of a pain. Those little side claws kind of stop you using it how I used to. Because that it was a brilliant, brilliant bit of kit. There's not a modded one yet, I don't think. Let me scroll across. No. 
I, I just don't get on with the log fork because it's got a single bar at the top, two at the bottom, one at the top. The logs all twist. I don't like that. There was a modded one that came out for FS17. They had two prongs at the bottom, two at the top, which was a bit better. Um, I'm going to go with the log grapple. We'll give that uh, the fork, sorry. Yeah, go with the fork with grapple. We'll buy that. Give that a go and we'll see how it works out. If it doesn't, then we can think of something else. But that should be okay. So what we're down to now? 28 grand. <laughs> now obviously, without um, using a Scorpion King or anything to start ourselves off, I'm going to be cutting a little of these logs by eye. Um, so it's going to be a little bit trickier. And obviously with the Scorpion Kings and the... Uh, Komatsu, you can also kind of line them all up so when you cut a tree down it might be in three sections four sections whatever it might be and those four sections will all be kind of laying next to each other doing it individually that's going to be a bit trickier plus there's plenty of logs lying around actually all over the place that we can just collect should we wish so what I'll do now I'll go and do this um, you've seen me do it once so I'll do this off screen We'll go to the garden centre, unload, and then we'll go and pick up our first little bits. I don't know whether to start doing our forestry at our forest or at the uh, over at the sawmill. I'll decide in a minute. I should now have mentioned at the start of the video, which hopefully I have, um, that I recorded most of this before the update went live. So what I'm doing now, you can't do anymore. I haven't been back on the map yet. I've just got back on my holiday. I'm going to. And Jim's messaged me to say that the back four greenhouses that I'm doing now, the cell points have been removed because of the problem, the issue there was, there was with that. Um, it's only the front two you can sell at now. Um, so I just thought before anyone starts coming and saying it won't work on mine, how come you're getting into th this was because I recorded this before the update. Uh, so I just thought I'd mention that. Um, I'm going to sell at, uh, I think I do four loads in total in the end. And then we're going to get on to doing um, some lumber, which was what I originally said I was going to do. A little bit of forestry um, on this first episode. Um, so yeah, I'll see you in a moment when that's done, but I just thought I'd clarify that small point. So with the update now installed, <coughs> I'm back at home, back of my holiday, and I've just tested a couple of things. I just did another water run, um, only because I wanted to see if you can only now do it the first two greenhouses whether you got more for each unload or whether it was just exactly the same. It's exactly the same, but I thought I'd test it. Uh, the other thing I will need to do is test the slurry at some point, so I might lease the slurry tanker um, and do a run of slurry just to see uh, how that kind of pans out. What I'm going to do is just park up there, turn that off. What we're going to do is grab the New Holland and go over to the forest. What I think I'm also going to do is place the toolbox mod because we're going to need that. Now I think what we're going to have to do, because we're going to need a rear weight for lifting logs, is let's purchase a rear weight. Um, and I'll put that on the front for the time being. What shall we get? Just a standard weight, I guess. Don't want to have to go uh, do anything crazy. Oh, let's get a... Yeah, let's get a barrel. We haven't had a barrel for a while, have we? What kind of barrel should we have? Uh... Let's go like a hazard. Challenger yellow? Yeah. Why not? Let's buy that. So that'll be our weight on the front. So I'll grab the front loader. Manure fork. We'll see how this gets on. Now, I'm not far off, I have to say. Jim messaged me earlier today, actually, to say... You couldn't believe I was so close to 30,000 subscribers and was I doing anything in particular like 30,000 subscriber special or anything like that and I I hadn't planned to um, but I, I suppose I could do I don't know what form that's going to take at the moment I'm having a bit of a thought 
pencil, a bit of a thing. Um, and, and I'll try and come up with something. We'll see. That's going to be the next couple of days, I would imagine. So, like I say, this is Saturday. I'm back up on holiday. Um, long drive back from the Lake District today. Um, Sunday, I'll try and get a video up, if not two, if I can manage it. Monday, I've got quite a busy day. I've got some stuff to do. Uh, a couple of jobs that I've got to do um, to help out my mother-in-law. So I don't know if I'll get a video posted um, on Monday. I will try my best to, let's just put it that way. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll do the toolbox back at the farm uh, later date. Let's go up through Mercury Hillside. And we'll head towards the... Uh, to our forest. I'm going to go up to ours rather than the forest by the sawmill. And I'll show you what I meant about the, uh, the bunker silo. I left the silo here, but the uh, the shed's gone, the house is gone, and all the other stuff up here is gone. But I think there is stuff stored here, so... Got to remember which way to go, though. <laughs> Um, I think I follow this track here. I think I do. Then we're bung the left here. Pretty sure it is. Now, from what I gather from comments and stuff, from various different people, people aren't a fan of the fences. <laughs> but that's the beauty of being able to take them out. I know it can be a bit of a grind, but if you've got the stump grinder or something like that and you can go along and take him out it's, it's all part and parcel of the map isn't it it's not going to be your voice cup to I think it's up here ooh bumpy I'm going to start off on a fairly flat area I think crikey Yeah, there's some holes here, aren't there? That's going to be interesting, getting stuff back out again. So, let's say we start somewhere like this, shall we? God! Blimey! The suspension on that trailer. Oh, I love that, that's brilliant. Right, okay then. I'll say let's begin. This is. <laughs> is there not a flat point anywhere up here? This is crazy. Right, let's just park that there, shall we? Put that there. I'm going to put the weight on the back. That should make life a little bit easier, shouldn't it? Uh, which one is it? That one? Oh, it's lucky I didn't fall over. Turn anywhere near enough. That's better. So, let's get our first tree down, shall we? I'm going to need to buy a stump grinder or lease one, probably buy one. Take that down. And like I say, we'll gradually increase our forestry presence on the map as well as doing some other stuff um, and as part of the update a lot of the stuff is, oh, this is not working. has been fixed as far as I'm aware so I think we can buy slurry now and I don't think there's a problem now with placeables there shouldn't be a problem with uh, loading screen people getting stuck in the loading screen and not doing anything that should have all been resolved I don't like this new chain source system, it's rubbish. I know it's. Some people love it, I think it's. Terrible. Seriously, come on. 
No, nothing. It's like the chainsaw doesn't exist. Well, I think that's about it. I hope so. Now we've got to work out. Lengthwise, how am I gonna how am I gonna judge this? Because when it's in the grass, <laughs> well, I need it to be. Oh, I'm just have to do rough cuts, I guess. I? And that's why up until when we get uh, our first like Scorpion King type piece of equipment. A lot of it's going to be by eye. How oh, well is this going to work? There we go. I've always found it way better than log grapples. It just, just always has been. So what I'll do, swing that round. Yeah, this one's going to be in two, isn't it? Oh, three, I suppose, a little bit on the end. So what I'll do is do that. That gives me roughly where to do my next one. Like that. Get that down. I'll push that forward a little bit. Then we'll push this one up alongside. And like I say, it, it seems like a lot of messing around, and I know a lot of people say, oh, just go straight to a Scorpion King, just go straight to a Komatsu, you can use this, you can use that. It's fine, it doesn't matter. I've done plenty of logging on 17 and other maps, I know I, I'll do it, I'm just trying something a little bit different, that's all. It's not going to be perfect. Not the first time, anyway. So, what we should do then. Push that against that. This may not pick up all three anyway. It might only do two of them, but... We'll see how we get on. Yeah, I think it's going to do two, isn't it? Let's do those two. It's gone both. Yes. Whoa. Oh yeah, tree stump. <laughs> yeah. Watch out for tree stumps, Mr. P. Oh, that goes easily high enough. Plus we've got this nice big gap in the middle of the trailer. Oh, I missed completely there. Drop them down. Like so. Maybe yeah, what I cut was a bit too long, possibly. Just thinking well, that needs to hook up. Or they need to be hanging off the back a little bit more. So what I think I'll do is just give those a bit of a nudge forward. And get some more on here. Like this is this is like I say. This is the first episode. This is all about me just kind of setting up, getting an idea what's what, how I'm going to tackle it. Um, I'll have a look at the uh, contracts in the next episode and see if we can sort out what we're going to do with regards to fertilizer spreading and that kind of thing. What piece of machinery we're going to use. I'll have a go at doing a bit of slurry as well, transporting a bit of slurry, and we'll see where we stand with that. It still hooks up. Should still look up, shouldn't it? Let's push it off a bit. That's good, that's it. Yeah, there's too much off the back, isn't it?
Hmm. That's interesting. So what I'll do is try and put the thicker end the other way around and then we'll see about hooking up. Maybe I'm going to do short logs. Maybe that should have been four, I think, maybe. I mean, that's designed for six metre lengths. I certainly did not do six metre lengths. These were, were definitely more like eight or maybe even seven. Seven. It's difficult to tell without the actual uh, without the actual cutter. That's, uh, Nicely done. This time avoiding the tree stump. Swing that back if we can. Yeah, they're too long, aren't they? Hmm, maybe. Right, let me have a fiddle around. I'll get some more logs on this. We'll try and level it out a little bit. I think having a separate vehicle with this hooked up to something still... Maybe I've been the truck up, because the truck's got a tow hitch, hasn't it? Yes, that's what I'll do. And then I can, because uh, that will give me a bit more space off the back as well, won't it? To overhang them. Yeah, good idea. Right, hang on. Just a tickety-boo. Go and get the truck. Now I'm lost. Which one am I going? This way, I think. <laughs> well, I have to say, bringing the lorry up and uh, hooking up has made all the difference. Way, way better. So what I'm going to do is spend a bit of time now. I've cut the, this last one a little bit, and the next one I've done a little bit shorter. So if you see these ones here that I did originally overhang by quite a bit here. <clears throat> the last one I just did is this one here, and it fits way way better on this. What I'm thinking I'm going to do then is I'll do a couple more loads, or I'll fill this load up doing it kind of manually like this. What I might do is try a slurry run or do another water run, which is about 18 grand. And then what I might, might do is lease the... Uh, I might lease... I haven't, I haven't used the Komatsu yet. I might lease the Komatsu. No, it's not in this one, is it? It's in this one. Um, how much is it to lease? 22 grand. So I could lease that one. The Ponza was used to be about 20... Oh, that's 22 as well. So yeah, so I might do a water run and lease it. We'll see what I get on the first load of logs as well, how much we make on that. So if we do all right on that, I might use the money from that to lease it. That way what I can do is start getting the trees down a lot quicker. I can get them in, in sort of sets of three or four, whatever. Maybe look at doing a wheel loader and a, an attachment this time on this map. Um, like I say, I'm just trying to think of different ways of of tackling the forestry. I'm going to do some forestry on Marwell Manor as well because I've got some forestry contracts and when, when I do it on there I want to tackle it slightly differently on there as well. So I'm, I'm going to, you know, whilst it is forestry I might use the ponds on this one, I might use the Komatsu on Marwell, I might not use the Komatsu um, or like a mechanical version at all. I, I want to do a bit more logging than just wood chipping because I kind of got into a habit of just doing wood chipping and um, that's all well and good but you know. again there's something very therapeutic about this so I'm going to fill up this trailer now and before the end of the episode we'll sell it and see what we get for a full load we'll take it over to the sawmill and um, we'll see what we get for a full load and then we'll sort of kind of decide where to go from there really If we do all right from it then this may be the sort of start we need to stop getting more equipment and stuff and then go more into I should have gone another side of that tree shouldn't I? Uh, more into I need to take that tree down actually or move the lorry one of the two it's 
quite a tight space, haven't really given myself a lot of room here, have I? That's a bit better. There we go. And then getting to animals and that kind of thing. Like I say, it's just a different way of getting into it rather than doing silage bales, rather than doing, you know, all contracts. I have to say, this is a very forgiving trailer. The couple of turns I made, I thought it was going to go over, but it's pretty good. So, I'm pretty sure. Now then, I just go to the disc, do I? I sold a little bit of lumber on Ravenport, but not a lot. Oh, there we go. 26 grand? That's pretty good. For one trailer though, 26 grand. So, to lease a Scorpion King or the Komatsu is 22. So that load is essentially paid for the lease of my next bit of equipment. I can't believe that. So if I got the Forder maybe. I love the way the suspension has really gone down on that as well. That's a brilliant mod. That took a serious amount of weight. Um, yeah, so I could get a load more trees down quicker, get them piled up, and then load up. I mean, I could do another couple of runs on this, another couple of runs, and that's another 50, you know, 50 grand. Um, not bad, not bad at all. Okay, well, there you go. That's my start on Mercury Farms. Let's say, next episode, I might start off and do a test with the silage. We'll do that. Um, I think I'm going to lease... I'll try the Komatsu. Um, I'm used to the, the Pond Scorpion King. I know some of the invert... Like the crane arm controls are a little bit different on 19 to 17. But I'm sure we'll be fine. Um, but I'm pleased with that. Very happy. A good start. We've done alright financially. Considering we started off with 200,000. We bought a few bits of equipment. We bought the forest... And we've leased a couple of things, and we're back up to 144. Um, and this is what I meant. Over here, earlier on in the episode, these were sell points. And obviously, since the update, they're not anymore. So these first four, or these top four, sorry, uh, this will be three, four, five, and six, don't have sell point triggers on them anymore. Just one and two down here. That's what I was talking about earlier. So, you know. It's all good. Mercury Farm should be working a lot better for everyone now. And with that, we have come to the end of this episode. More fun and excitement to follow. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. If you want to share this video, then please be my guest, whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.